Hello and welcome to my channel, Medicine with Dr. Morin. I'm Dr. Keith Morin. The CDC is finally acknowledging the power of natural immunity. The CDC released a report this week on COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations by vaccination status, as well as previous COVID-19 diagnosis. This allows us to compare vaccinated immunity to natural immunity. It was based on a large number of people in California and New York State between May 2021 and November 2021. The study was conducted at the end of the Alpha Variant wave and during the Delta wave in these two states, and the two states make up 18% of the total U.S. population. The CDC researchers looked at four groups of people, the unvaccinated with no previous infection, the vaccinated with no previous infection, unvaccinated with previous infection, and vaccinated with previous infection. They then looked to see who developed COVID-19 in both states. In addition, in California, they also looked at hospitalizations. Now to the results. Now, during the time period, they compared unvaccinated people with no previous infection to the other three groups. This group was considered the baseline. First, they looked at new COVID-19 diagnoses. This slide shows the results. Again, the first group at the top who were unvaccinated and had no previous infection served as the baseline. The second group, which was the vaccinated group with no previous infection. Now this group was made up of people that either had two mRNA vaccines or one J&J. &J. As you can see, this particular group had a 6.2 fold lower risk in California and 4.5 fold lower infection rate in New York State of a new diagnosis of COVID. The third group, which was the unvaccinated group with previous infection or recovered or natural immunity, had a 29-fold lower risk in California and 14.7-fold lower risk in New York. The last group was the vaccinated group with previous infection, in other words, hybrid immunity. They had a 32.5-fold lower risk in California and 19.8-fold lower risk in New York State. So if you take in this slide, all four groups, you can see that the lowest risk of COVID-19 infections occurred in the vaccinated group who also had previous infection, which is called hybrid immunity. They had slightly better reduction than the unvaccinated previously infected group. However, this was not statistically significant. Now the third group, which was the unvaccinated previously infected group or natural immunity, had much more significant reductions in both California and New York State than the people who were vaccinated with no previous infection in this analysis. This slide from their study looks at the entire time frame of the study from May until November for the California study subjects and it plots all four groups on the graph. The dark blue line, which is above the other three lines, represents the rate of COVID-19 cases in the unvaccinated with no previous COVID-19 diagnosis, which was the baseline group number one. The light blue hashed line represents group two, the vaccinated, no previous infection, and the other two lines, which are essentially superimposed on each other, are the unvaccinated, previously infected, i.e. natural immunity, and the vaccinated previously infected, i.e. hybrid immunity. So you can see on this graph the significant reduction in infection for the three groups compared to the unvaccinated uninfected group in dark blue. You can see that the people who have had previous COVID-19 infection, whether they've been vaccinated or not, had the lowest rates of new COVID-19 infections during the study. Next, I want to show you the same graph from New York State. This is very similar to the California graph and again shows the much higher rate of COVID-19 infection in the unvaccinated uninfected group one compared to the other three groups. Again, it demonstrates that people with previous infection, whether vaccinated or not, had the lowest rates and were essentially superimposed. The vaccinated group with no previous infection had a slightly higher rate of COVID-19 infection, just like in the California group of patients. Next, I want to show the hospitalization rates for all four groups. This was only done for California, and here are the results. 
Group 1, the unvaccinated with no previous infection, again was the baseline. The people that were vaccinated with no previous infection, Group 2, had a 19.8-fold lower risk of hospitalization, and the unvaccinated previously infected group had a 55.3-fold lower risk of hospitalization. And lastly, Group 4, the vaccinated with previous infection, had a 57.5-fold lower risk of hospitalization. This slide shows the same kind of results that we saw for the reduction of infection in both New York and California. So basically, the worst group to be in, of course, was the unvaccinated with no previous infection. And that's the group with no immunity. The lowest risk score, of course, were those that had a previous infection, whether vaccinated or not. In other words, group three and group four, they were essentially superimposed. Now, there was a significant reduction in hospitalization in those people who were vaccinated without previous infection. So what all this data is telling us is that it's important to have immunity. You obviously either get this through vaccination or from being infected. If you have immunity, you're much less likely to get infected or hospitalized with the virus. Now, this is really important if you're older or have comorbidities. I've presented many studies on my channel about natural immunity. In fact, on YouTube, I don't think you'll find a channel that's gone into the depth and showed as many studies on natural immunity. And these studies have shown that it's at least as good as vaccinated immunity, with some studies showing that it's actually statistically better. We'll link to the playlist on natural immunity down below in the description and up above. This particular video, which I made systematic review of natural immunity, is a recent state-of-the-art review on the major studies looking at natural immunity. There's a link below to the video in the description. Today's study I'm reporting on suggested that at least during this time period of May to November in New York and California, the natural immunity was better than vaccinated immunity. I have two more slides to look at, which look at each state and the vaccines that were given and subsequently what happened with COVID-19 infections. This shows the rate of infections with no previous COVID-19 or A and J in the blue line, followed by the gray line, which is no previous COVID-19 and Pfizer vaccinations, then with lower numbers, no previous COVID-19 with Moderna vaccination. These three lines are all higher, indicating more infections than the last three lines I'm going to talk about. The lowest rate of infections on the graph are people all who had previous COVID infections and were vaccinated. The yellow line is if you had a previous COVID infection with J&J, &J, and the blue and green line is if you had previous COVID-19 and Pfizer vaccinations, and the blue line is previous COVID-19 and Moderna vaccinations. The next graph is from New York State. The data here mirrors what we just saw in California with the highest rates of infection in the unvaccinated J &J group in blue again, and the gray and yellow lines indicating no previous infection and vaccination with either Pfizer and Moderna respectively. The lowest three lines again were people who had hybrid immunity. They either had previous infection and had J&J &J or previous infection with Moderna or Pfizer. There were a number of limitations in this study, and it's important to point these out. That's often overlooked. It's an observational study, obviously. People weren't randomized to vaccination versus no vaccination if you were previously infected or not previously infected. Now, because it's clearly an observational study, it's not as powerful as if it was randomized. Now, it brings up an important point that the method of the study is actually the most important part of any clinical study, although it often never gets mentioned, because limitations can cast doubt on the results of any study. I've previously talked on this channel two studies produced by the CDC which had significant limitations on this particular topic, both of which suggested that natural immunity was not as good as vaccinated immunity, despite many other studies to the contrary. In medicine, we like to look at all of the studies that we have, hopefully they're similar, and put them together often in a meta-analysis. This is one of the ways that we can make decisions on how best to treat our patients. These two CDC studies were picked up by the media and by people who commented on my video. 
and it illustrates why it's so important to critically appraise the medical literature, which is something that I've talked about before on my channel, and it's something that's been occurring a lot during this pandemic. A sentence or two out of the conclusion paragraph of the abstract of a study can become a very active soundbite that gets virally spread without putting proper clinical appraisal to it. Context is crucial. Physicians, of course, like myself, are trained to critically appraise the literature and to question the literature and biases that we have. This is why the peer review process is important in publishing medical studies. At a doctor's journal club, for example, we would all read a study such as this ahead of time, then spend 60 minutes discussing different aspects of it, what was good, what was not so good. While it may seem boring, these are the things that allow us to move forward in medicine rather than simply believing the conclusion of an abstract and reporting on it on the internet or on other media. The other limitations are that it occurred primarily during Delta and not during Omicron. It was also conducted before booster vaccinations. They also did not stratify the results by time since vaccine receipt, and there was no information on the severity of the initial infection. It most importantly does not account for the full range of morbidity as well as mortality. In other words, symptoms, illnesses, and death, which are represented by the groups who went through previous infections. This is an important point to make. However, as the researchers point out, the safest way to get immunity is through vaccination. This is very important. Now, this is an important point, especially if you're older or have comorbidities. So this study is another study that shows the strength of natural immunity. Remember, with natural immunity, you make antibodies not just to the spike protein, but to other components of the virus as well as memory cells, both B and T cells, to parts of the whole virus. Again, not just the spike protein. It's not clear at this point what the long-term protection will be like for people with natural immunity or vaccinated immunity. The hope is, is that memory B and T cells that develop from the vaccine or natural infection will protect against severe disease for many years to come. This will obviously depend upon how the virus evolves. It may not, without periodic boosts in immunity, either getting reinfected or a vaccine boost, protect well against minor symptomatic infection. This, in fact, is the case with a lot of common cold viruses that we've all come into contact with over the years. With the common cold, of course, we develop long-lasting memory cells which ultimately protect us against severe infection and death but once our antibody levels from that infection starts to drop down, we can get reinfected with that same virus months or a few years down the road. And then of course you get common cold symptoms from that virus all over again. Lastly, I want to make an announcement. Starting this week, I'm going to devote more time and streamline how I make my videos so I can provide more videos succinctly, of course, and much faster in order to provide the most accurate up-to-date COVID developments. If you like my channel and videos like this, please subscribe. Please feel free to share with your family and friends. Most of the videos on my channel are actually about COVID, and this is primarily because I started my channel around the same time as the pandemic began. Thanks a lot for joining me today on Medicine with Dr. Morin. I'm Dr. Keith Morin, and don't forget to get healthy if you're not, and please stay healthy.